So look, we just have this neural network that I've done. I'm just going to scroll down here. Basically what it does is it classifies images of traffic signs. Right down here, these are the different traffic signs that we have. There's 43 different classes of them, and then I have my graph of distributions of how many pictures I have of each one. So basically how this is going to work is um, I'm using OpenCV. We have all of our, we imp I imported all of my data images that I found online. I checked that my images are correctly, are imported correctly, and then I'm uploading the, da the data from the CSV files. And then what I do is I iterate through the data, each index and series. And then um, this, I have a graph right here, which displays the distribution of each images in the data class, which what that means is how many, like if I have um, four yield signs, I have four yield signs, five stop signs, five stop signs. That's pretty much what that is. And then what I have to do is I have to go through and convert all the images to grayscale. And why I'm doing that is because when um, it takes more processing power to compute them when they're in normal RGB, which all these images are, and they have a depth of three. Now, um, you're probably wondering, again, so it doesn't, these aren't images that color matters. Like, if I had two cars and they were the exact same color, and if I was trying to classify the difference between the two cars, then yes, I would want to use, um, I, I wouldn't want to use grayscale values for that. But since these are things that color does not um, play that much a part of, it cuts down in processing power, and it lets, it gives, um, it focuses on the details and it is able to focus on the edges of the images. Like some of these stop signs are like the, how they have the different, or the speed limit signs, how they have the different numbers. Now, now that I'm in grayscale, it gives um, more edge detection to the different numbers. So that way you can definitely classify between, for example, 50 and 30. Okay, so that's just right here. I have this function that converts to grayscale. It takes in an image and then converts between the colors. Now, I use histogram equalization, which basically standardizes the lighting. So that way, when I have an image and, like, the stop sign, let's say it's dark, it's darker outside than it is during the day, it will standardize that lighting. So that way, it will still be able to read the, it will be able to get the same reading from the stop sign, even when it's dark outside versus when it's light outside. And so, um... What that does is again, it makes it, it it makes it easier for the network to distinguish between the different features. Like again, the edges of the stop sign, or like if you have a sign that's a circle versus a hexagon, or the yield sign, which is a triangle. And then we verify that our images are unaffected. And again, we then it comes into this pre-processing function, which is applied to all the images. And what it does is it normalizes the images, which causes all the values to be in between a similar range for comparison. And how we normalize is we divide all the pixel values by 255, which causes all the values to be in between and is be to be in between zero and one value. And again, like I said, it brings all the values to be in a single similar range, which will be easier to use for comparison. And then I used a, the um, list and map function. And what that does, this is our training data, our testing data, and our validation data. I've been using these same three things throughout the program. And so when you run the data set through the program, we go through and we return the specific function and then we create the new, we create a new array of the values. And then we, we're adding depth to our data to be able to better classify between the features. And then we have right here our data augmentation process in which we train our model to fit the data. And we use the image recognition, the data generator. And then we create new images. And then again, I have that um, plotting the images. And then since there's 50 images, cycle through the 50 images and plot them. And I just have a for loop right here. And then this is just printing the shape of the data, which basically what that is, is it's just the values of the image. And then we encode the values. And then we use the neural network. And what this does is I have pooling layers. I have generalized layers. I have conv there's four there's two pulling layers, four convolutional layers, and then the data's flattened layer. So basically how this model starts off with, there's also 780 parameters in the network. So how this starts off with is I have my pooling function and the um which pulls the layers together. And there's also I had two dropout layers, but I noticed that the second dropout layer was um decreasing the value accuracy of the network, so I took that one out. But basically what a dropout what a dropout layer does is that's the number of nodes that are dropped every layer. And so I have point there's point five in this one. And basically the reason you want to do that is it prevents the network from becoming overfit. And when your network's overfitting, then it starts to produce air, then it starts to get less accurate. So you want to avoid that. And I also use the ReLU activation function. And then again, there's four convolutional networks. 
I mean, there's four convolutional layers, my bad. And what layers in a neural network are is that's basically when um, each, uh, you basically, you're sending images through and they're training and they're classifying images. And then I have a max pooling layer. What this does is it cuts the image by half. And then what I do is I flatten the data into a 1D array and there's 450 nodes. And I did the math for that basically. You multiply your values, do matrix multiplication, add them together, whatever. And then, again, I had another dropout layer, but um, with this layer, at least in my um, experience of when I was training the network, it was making, it was causing the, the, it was causing the accuracy to go down, and even though they're supposed to prevent overfitting, it was actually causing the model to overfit. And then I'm just using um, Atom, Compile, and then this is just printing the summary. So anyway, this is how I get the image. I just have it so that um, you can just enter a URL for any image. And then it just opens the image, pre-processing image, this thing right here that's just displaying the image, and then reshaping the image. And then it prints out um, the sign is. And then I just have right here, is this efficient? No, probably not. But I just go through, and since there's 43, I just check each individual image. Cool, let's play this, see what it's all about. Okay, it's loading, loading, loading. Um, I might pause this because this could. So this is just our image data we have right here. And it's just going through. I added assertions in case, um, basically for when you're throwing an image that's not a valid image, but since all these images are valid, it's not going to be doing anything. It's just to keep, in case something did go wrong, it's to keep the program from crashing. So right here, you can tell it's just displaying zero. Well, I guess there's technically 44 images, or no, there's 43. It only goes to 42 because it starts at zero. And then if you couldn't tell from the um, history fitting variable I have assigned, basically there's 10 different epochs. And if you can tell, the loss will, um, I'm going to just pause this part because it's probably, I'm just going to pause this for a second because it will, it does take a while to load the models. Okay, so if you can see we're on epochs, 9 out of 10, there's only 10, so we should be about done. But if you can notice, our accuracy has steadily been, our accuracy and our accuracy value has steadily been improving. Um, I'm not really sure. Yep, it's still going to get better for this. I'm not really sure if I actually needed to add that 10 epochs because it gets pretty accurate around 9 at almost 99% um, value accuracy and then almost 96%. Oh no, it, get, it get, does get better for the last epochs. I wasn't completely sure about that. So yeah, we're almost done this one. And just watch it load. Okay, and then um, enter a URL. I just have one. I'm just going to copy and paste it right in there. Enter. And the sign is yield, which is correct. And the predicted sign value is 13. And when you scroll back right up here, the... 13 index is yield, which is correct. And then if I put, if I can prove to you, if you click on that URL, the sign is yield. 